Now that we know about moles, molar mass and mass percentages, we can start doing some very useful calculations involving chemical formulas. One of those calculations involves determining empirical formulas and therefore subsequently chemical formulas. Now if we had a sample of matter containing a compound whose identity we didn't know, we could send the sample off to an analytical laboratory for elemental analysis. Elemental analysis is a process whereby a sample of matter is analysed for its elemental composition and often the results come back to us in terms of mass percentage of each element involved in the compound. So for example, a compound containing calcium, carbon and oxygen could come back with the results that the compound contained 31.3% calcium, 18.8% carbon and 50.0% oxygen. There are at least two compounds that could contain calcium, carbon and oxygen. One of them is calcium carbonate, where the ratio of calcium to carbon to oxygen is 1 to 1 to 3. Another compound that it could be is calcium oxalate, where the ratio of calcium to carbon to oxygen is 1 to 2 to 4. So the data that we get back from an elemental analysis can't tell us directly what the correct ratio is and therefore what the compound is. But we can now use our knowledge of moles and molar mass to actually help us determine the empirical formula and therefore the chemical formula. At this point, it's worth reminding ourselves what an empirical formula is. It's a chemical formula where the subscripts are written in the lowest whole number ratio of the elements involved in that particular compound. We should also remind ourselves that for ionic compounds, the chemical formula is already written in the lowest whole number ratio of all the elements involved, and so the empirical formula and the chemical formula are the same for ionic compounds. Now that's not the case for molecular compounds, where the subscripts in a chemical formula are a whole number multiple of the subscripts in the empirical formula. A typical problem we might get along these lines is shown here. Elemental analysis of a compound shows it contains those three percentages that we just saw a moment ago. 31.3% of calcium, 18.8% carbon, and 50.0% oxygen. And we're being asked to determine the empirical formula and the chemical formula. We can write down an expression for the empirical formula straight away. CAX, CY, OZ, where the subscripts X, Y, and Z are the whole number subscripts of the empirical formula, and if we can determine the numerical values of x, y, and z, we effectively have the mole ratio of x, y, and z, and therefore we have the empirical formula. When we write our empirical formula, you will note we write the most electropositive element first, and the most electronegative element last. A good rule of thumb is that electropositive elements are found to the left and down in the periodic table, and the most electronegative elements are found to the right and higher up in the periodic table. So in this case, calcium appears over on the left-hand side of the periodic table in group two, so it's the most electropositive of these three elements and is written first. Oxygen sits over in group 16 of the periodic table on the right-hand side there, making it the most electronegative of the three elements and so is written last. And carbon sits in group 14 in the middle of the other two elements and so is written in the middle. So we are writing from left to right calcium, carbon, oxygen. Getting back to the question, when finding the empirical formula for a mass percent data, as in this case, a neat little trick is to assume that we start with 100 grams of the sample compound, because if we have 100 grams of the compound, then the 31.3% of calcium actually says we have 31.3 grams of calcium in the sample. And the 18.8% of carbon in the 100 gram sample means that we actually have 18.8 grams of carbon in the sample. And the 50.0% of oxygen in the 100 gram sample means we actually have 50.0 grams of oxygen in the sample. Now if we have mass quantities of each element, we can now work out the moles of each element by using our molar mass equation. Finding the moles of each element in the sample will give us the mole ratio of each element and therefore will give us the empirical formula. So we'll set the molar mass equation aside and we'll start with our calcium calculation. Moles of calcium equals mass of calcium, which is 31.3 grams, divided by the molar mass of calcium, which we get from the periodic table as 40.08 grams per mole, written to four significant figures. We put those numbers into our calculator and we get 0.7809 moles of calcium in our 100 gram sample. 
We do the same for carbon. Moles of carbon equals the mass of carbon divided by the molar mass of carbon, which is 18 grams, divided by 12.01 grams per mole, which we get directly from the periodic table and round to four significant figures. We plug those numbers into our calculator and we get 1.565 moles of carbon in our 100 gram sample. Doing the same for oxygen, a mass of 50.0 grams divided by the molar mass of oxygen from the periodic table, which is 16.00 grams per mole to four significant figures, giving us 3.125 moles of oxygen. So in our 100 gram sample, here are the amounts in moles of each element. And we can say that the 0 0.7809 moles of calcium is related to the X subscript in the empirical formula. The 1.565 moles of carbon is related to the Y subscript of the empirical formula. And the 3.125 moles of oxygen is related to the Z subscript. In fact, we could even write out a chemical formula with those numbers represented. But this chemical formula we know doesn't make any sense because whether it is an empirical formula or a chemical formula, the subscripts need to be whole numbers. So we need a way of getting these numbers as whole numbers while still representing the same ratio of moles of calcium, carbon and oxygen. The easiest way to do this is to identify the calculated value of the least number of moles, which in this case is 0.7809 moles of calcium, which is a smaller amount compared to moles of carbon and moles of oxygen. We then divide each of these numbers by that smallest number so that 0 0.7809 is divided by itself. And then 1.565 is divided by 0 0.7809. And the 3.125 moles of oxygen is divided by 0 0.7809. The calculated values that result are 1 for calcium, 2 for carbon, and 4 for oxygen. And these numbers represent the lowest whole number ratio of the moles of each element in the compound, which is exactly what the empirical formula is. And so we get an empirical formula of CA1C2O4, which of course simplifies to CAC2O4, remembering that we don't explicitly write the ones in a chemical formula. This chemical formula represents the ionic compound calcium oxalate, and the ions involved are the Ca2 plus calcium ion and the C2O42 minus ion, which is the oxalate ion. As I said, this is an ionic compound, and we've already noted previously that the empirical formula and the chemical formula for an ionic compound are identical. So CaC2O4 is not only the empirical formula, it's also the chemical formula in this case. To summarize, if we are given the percent mass of each element in a compound and asked to determine the empirical formula, we start by assuming we have 100 grams of the sample. This then makes it easy to determine the mass of each element and therefore calculate the moles of each element using the molar mass equation. We can then determine the mole ratio of each element by dividing the moles of each element by the lowest calculated value of moles for all the elements involved. And that mole ratio gives us the empirical formula.